Hey folks, Jessica here and a very well-timed stig. So, uh, baby, sit down. So we're in Grand Lufasia Day and today I want to do a quick character spotlight on Yukata Zauhao Molina. This little kitty, this little stiggy dude, is doing his best to sabotage this video. So, Yukata Zauhao Molina. She came out right around the time uh, Yukata Shiva came out. And I noted at the time that I thought she might end up being pretty good. I think people were just more excited about Yukata Shiba, though, because he's one of those, like, major summons that turn into a playable character, and people always tend to be a little bit hype about those. Uh, but yeah, her kit's good for two reasons that are very different, and are seeing a lot of use in this United fight, and likely will see a lot of use in the future as well, I would predict. So let's just jump in and talk about what she does. Okay, Zaha Molina. She is light, harven, special, staff, and then female. She is largely a support character, using her to enhance your other characters. Uh, her charge attack, her ogi, is parlay and prayer. It's 450% light damage to a foe, all allies gain 20% light attack, and 20% dark damage cut. That's not really, like, the main appeal for it. It's a totally functional charge attack. It's, it's nothing particularly special, though. So her first skill is Kataktia which is Greek, by the way. That, I believe, translates to haze, and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing any of this to all the Greek fans here. But yes, it is a 12-turn cooldown, 3-turn duration, which is a very long cooldown, by the way. She's not really meant for a very long fight. She's meant for, like, probably up to, like, I would say max a 5-turn fight. But it gives all uh, allies a 5,000 point shield, mirror image, and then a 100%, 50% armored effect. Yeah, 12 turns, very, 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 very long for an effect like this. Uh, definitely not for high difficulty content or very um, extended fights like full auto. Okay, Iliophenea, which translates to sunshine in Greek. This is a 12 turn cooldown, 8 turn duration field effect. If you're not familiar with field effects, they're fairly rare actually. Think of them as a buff that's put on the entire uh, the entire stage that affect both the enemy and your own team. And the description here is oh so helpful. Illuminate the field with sunlight. Great, what the hell does that mean? Uh, deploy the Iliophenea effect. That gives 20% attack up. Remember, it's both you and the enemy. It's buffing both sides. 25% defense down. Again, debuffing both sides. And you can deal crit hits regardless of element. So typically, and I'm not going to get too far into crits, but typically you can only crit if you have elemental advantage. So think like water against fire, uh, earth against water, um, light against dark, dark against light, etc. You could crit off element with this effect in play. And then a 10%, 50% boost to foe's crit hit rate. So this is a 10% chance to deal 50% extra damage. But if I'm reading this correctly, and I actually wasn't aware of this before I um, read this skill on the wiki, the way this is worded indicates that this is only a buff to the enemy. So it's a one-sided buff to the enemy, which is a little bit weird, actually. So does the fact that she has a one-sided buff for the boss matter that much? Not really, honestly. You're primarily going to use her on fight. If you're using a front row, it's going to be for fights where you're trying to spike the boss down really fast. Grand Blue is honestly not a game where defense is hugely valued, except for a very few hard fights where it is. So yeah, I, I wouldn't worry about it too much. And that kind of leads me to my third skill, which is Ilios Fotizo, which means Sun Illuminate. It is a 12-turn cooldown, 5-turn duration buff, and this is probably the main reason you would use her on the on the front line. So all light allies gain a 100%, 20% crit hit rate buff. This is 100% chance to do 20% extra damage. And then a 15% damage cap up, which is substantial from a skill like this. And then also a 20% bonus light damage effect, 20% echo. These are all pretty powerful buffs. They last five turns. And that kind of just immediately gives you an idea of how people will use her. You're going to use her with that one chain on uh, a Dark Opus weapon that gives you double strike, probably. You're going to use her with Nihan, who will also give you double strike, plus a bunch of other buffs. Uh, you're going to use her probably like Wolf Luchador, like anything to really abuse the fact that you're getting so much extra damage while this is up. And it's only a five turn buff. Uh, that's likely more than enough to kill a ton of bosses, including uh, Nightmare 95. So, yeah, that, that's the main reason you would have her on the front line. 
In addition to that, though, let's talk a little about one of her passives, Vivid Sunshine. Sticky is out of here. He's had enough. Uh, Vivid Sunshine. Supplement light allies crit hit damage by 3,000. It's not a hugely extra amount, but, I mean, supplemental damage doesn't tend to be huge amounts. It's just, it's just nice to have. But that leads to the other side of her, because I mentioned there's two sides of her. For a relatively short fight, say, NM95, you will probably actually use it in the front line because you're getting so much extra damage to fight sure enough that the fact that she doesn't do much beyond that five turns isn't that big a deal. But for longer fights, Sun's Divine Protection. 10% dark damage reduction to light allies, and then all light allies start the battle with Veil. Takes effect even if Zhao Hamelina is a sub-ally. Reminder, if you're newer and you know where Veil does, it debuffs the first debuff that hits you. This is a pretty big deal, uh, especially in this uh, this United fight, because the Nightmare 100 and 150 boss will cast Paralyze on your team on a couple triggers, and the fact that you just have Veil by having Zhao Molina in the back row saves you from having to solve that. It cuts out the randomness of, like, if the wrong character gets uh, gets para, it saves you having to pot to remove para. And then in addition to that, 10% uh, dark damage reduction for light allies doesn't sound huge, but it's completely free because it's from the back row. So that's pretty helpful for hard content. So I'll only talk about this briefly because I did a whole video on it, but one place her damage reduction actually does matter is for the zero button three character OTK setup, at least the one I was using. Because, uh, let me just switch that team real quick. Uh, that team was uh, this one. And the issue I was running into is this team needs Narmaya to survive the boss's special attack, so she can counterattack in order to consistently kill it. And I was finding like maybe one out of five times Narmaya would get clapped and uh, I wouldn't get the counterattack damage and they have to take a second turn. Zao Molina made that way more consistent. And you wouldn't think a 10% damage, dark damage reduction would matter, but there's definitely been attempts where Dormaya survives with 1k HP, so like, yeah, it, do it does matter. Also, um, I'll mention it here since I don't, I'm not gonna mention it anywhere else, honestly, is uh, I didn't realize at the time, but I have forgotten that damage cap up effects have their own cap, so I was hitting the charge attack damage cap up cap, which is a sentence that does my head in. Uh, so I rejuggled some things around and uh, switched the key on the Dark Opus weapon to skill damage cap up. So now I'm no longer, well, I'm right at the, da the charge attack damage cap up cap. Oh, it does my head in every time I say it, but uh, that redistribution helped out a little bit too. Allowed me to get a little bit more HP in there for more consistency. And the consistency in that setup, since you're doing it so freaking much, is really important. But yeah, if you want to see that setup, there's a whole other video on it. The front row where you want to use Zaha Molina is uh, this team in order, the back row doesn't really matter, um, well, it's helpful, it's more damage because of dark, Light Silva, and Geisenborger is actually pretty important because the boss throws some huge damage attacks, and the Geisenborger, if you don't know, has this passive that caps the dark damage taken by Light Allies to 10k, which actually will save your life or at least help you maintain stamina a lot better. So that's what the back row is for. But Zal Molina is here with Nihan in order to increase uh, just the amount of damage you can do. Plus, uh, Grand Jeanne d'Arc is also here for all her buffs, and you're gonna do an absolute shit ton of damage, and this essentially lets you bury NM95 super fast. So I'm running Viking, uh, the grid is, all right, it's a pretty good light grid, it's actually, slightly out of date because Harmonia is out now, so you can probably switch a couple things here for a couple Harmonias. Um, there's a few tweaks you can do now that Harmonia exists to make this more ideal, but honestly I didn't want to spend the Damascus on I I have two Harmonias. I just didn't want to spend six Damascus considering Light United Fight is almost over and it's not usually an element I used to farm things anyway. So yes, uh, this this grid could be a little bit better, but it's, it's also fine. But the main thing here is we're running Viking, which is important to know, and uh, we're running uh, this uh, the, the Chain of Fallacy. And the Chain of Fallacy is pretty interesting. It's bonus uh, elemental uh, damage effects, so 20%. 
and gives you minus 100% charge bar gain rate. So you have no charge bar gain rate. Uh, and then um, additionally though, this key makes it so whenever Jita charge attacks, everybody gets double strike, which is freaking huge. Uh, that said, can't gain charge bar. So how the F do you actually, uh, how do you charge that? Well, Viking. <laughs> Long answer, short answer, Viking. Because Vinland, uh, Vinland gives you 100% um, charge bar uh, for over the course of a couple turns too. So this lets you consistently keep that double strike for the team up. In addition to that, Nihan, uh, we're not actually going to use Nirvana, which is one of the bigger things that Nihan does, gives everyone double strike, uh, has this effect that is um, uh, six wolf tonic. Six wolf tonic lets you, gives you a charge bar gain rate buff. Even though we're at minus one hundred, this is going to get us off of that 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 absolute no charge bar gain floor and let you gain a little bit of charge bar. So that's helpful as well. So I'll just show the team in in, in action. Okay, NM ninety five. So there's a couple of sequencing things that will really matter here. The big one is, if you hit Vinland right now, it's not going to give Jita any charge bar, actually, because she's at minus 100% charge bar gain. You actually must use Nihan's 6 Wolf Tonic first. We'll use Enlightening as well for the buff. Don't need to use um, Nirvana, because Nirvana gives double strike, and uh, we only have double strike from Jita's, from Jita's skill. So, get the buff up. And then Vinland gives 100% charge bar. That only happens if she has the charge gain buff from Nihan. And then Zal Molina will just activate all the things. And then we'll actually PS above as well. Can probably cut some buttons out here, but just hit the things. So Gigi's gonna, gonna give everyone double strike. In a lot. So thing you note, everyone took only 10k damage there, that's because of Geis and Morgar in the back row capping that damage. Otherwise, otherwise this boss hits real freaking hard. And again, everyone's 100, minus 100 charge bar, but it'll add full charge bar because of 6 Wolf Tonic. Again, double strike, very spicy. Treasure Jacks these days look so much cooler than they used to. It's weird seeing the end light someone up with his little gun, because he usually doesn't do much damage. And then this turn we'll activate Jean's assassin skill. And a thing to know about Double Strike on Jita, she won't get it herself, because she doesn't have it and she gives it. So if you wanted to actually maximize maximize damage, you get one more attack and you use Nirvana there. It's, you don't necessarily have to, but it will get you a little bit more damage turn turn. And this should be a three turn kill. So there's the charge hack. And that's an easy three turn. And that's partly enabled by Zal Molina. Let's try one of these at speed. I'm sure a lot of folks are curious how fast this can go. Refreshes. I've actually puzzled out what is the minimum skill I can use. So we'll go with something like that. Omnian skills, Jita's two skills, plus Mist, I guess. John's debuff, and then John's buff. Beelzebub. Attack. You know how this goes. Attack refresh. Attack refresh. Now we wait for lockout. So cue the buff attack. 
And that should be it. Today, Junior. There's Assassin. Attack refresh done. So, yeah, that's that's how fast you can get Nightmare 95 down to. Let's see what the actual time was. There's, <laughs> they need to add a better way of checking this. Let's see here. Read. Battle log. So that's 56 seconds. You could probably get it even faster. I definitely hit a few buttons I probably don't need to hit. Conclusions. See, I told you it'd be a fast video. I am capable of doing a fast video every now and then. So let's give her a ranking. So, for fast fights, so like NM95, for example, I would say she is probably S tier. Maybe leading double S, but I would say comfortably S. Uh, she really brings a ton to the table for a strat like the one we we're using on that NM95 boss. For fast fights, you want characters that do an absolute ton of damage or characters that have significantly powerful buffs that allow you to get beyond your damage cap, which is exactly what she brings with uh, with uh, her third skill, Ilias Fort Fortizo. Now, for full auto, she's rough, honestly. Her charge check's not bad, but it's also not anything to write home about. It saves you a little bit of damage, makes you a little bit, do a little bit more damage, nothing too special. Her, her one is fine on full auto. Like, you do want to mitigate damage if possible, but it's got such bad uptime. Like, 12 turn cooldown really kills it, and full auto is going to last pretty long. Her two won't actually activate on full auto at all, so we'll knock some points off that. You're going to have to manual it if you want that up. And then her third skill, again, that that is definitely her best skill. It's quite a good skill, but the uptime is not great. It is a five turn duration, which is a decent bonus to your damage on full auto, but it's got 12 turn cooldown so long. And then on top of that, she's not doing anything like throwing auto nukes, which is what you really want from from a full auto character. Just a lot of passive damage all the time, turn over turn, turn over turn. Uh, she is adding some supplemental light allies crit damage so that does add up over the course of the long fight but overall i would say she's probably beat here on full auto she's not actively a detriment on full auto so i wouldn't say she's c tier c tier is truly reserved for like the worst characters in that category for high difficulty again um her charge attack's nothing special it'll save you a little bit of damage makes you a little, do much, a little bit more damage her one's actually pretty decent because getting mirror image on demand for a high difficulty fight can save you, but it's got such long cooldowns. Like, the left time's just so bad. 12 turn cooldown is really long. So, that's probably not going to be that helpful. Her two, her field effect, might actually actively kill you on some fights that are high difficulty. Uh, her three is still great, still her best skill. But again, a lot of times you're high difficulty fight a little bit of extra dam like getting extra damage is not really your priority most of the time for a high difficulty fight. And uh, it's still got a long cooldown on top of that. I think the thing that keeps her from drifting too far into actively bad for high difficulty is her passive's really strong. Uh, you get a like the veil you get automatically is only one time, so that's not actually the big deal. The big deal is that ten percent damage reduction just for being in the back row all the time. That's potentially pretty pretty impactful. And I can't overstate how much effects that buff the team from the back row really elevate a character. Because unless you're playing dark, you're not really expecting to actively lose characters from the front row very often. So a character that can passively buff from the back row is essentially free in a lot of high difficulty fights. And so like, it's 10%, not a huge reduction, but the fact that it's free makes that pretty good. So I would say she's A for uh, for hard fights. A tier, specifically if she's in the back row for hard fights. I would not run her front row for hard fights unless you have a very specific use case for her in mind. And you have a specific use case for her in mind where you need mirror image, so there's probably other directions you can go. So yeah, overall, let's see here. S tier for fast fights. B tier for full auto, A for high difficulty. I would say she's S tier overall. Maybe a weak S, but definitely S. I'm not really comfortable saying she's A tier, because A tier is like 
a decidedly average character, and I feel like she's definitely above average. So yeah, if you've got a Yukata Zaha Molina, definitely uh, let me know how you like her in the comments down below. Do not sleep on her. This U9 fight's been particularly good for her. Like, she really helps on NM95. And for uh, the, the harder difficulties where you're having to deal with para, the fact that uh, she can just let you ignore ignore the first one by giving you Veil without having to solve it any other way, that's quite, quite helpful. And no, I'm not going to showcase that, because literally it would be me just doing those fights with Zaha in the background, so what am I even showcasing, right? I'm showcasing having Veil, which is not, not particularly interesting. But yes, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye!